Hoi mateys, and welcome back to the uh, AVP Retrospective Series. Well, we've covered the mainline Alien films, and now we're going to go trekking back to pre-Alien films with the sequel spin-off, Ridley Scott's Return to Sci-Fi, with the controversial and extremely divided Prometheus. Mm -hmm. This movie's got... This is a movie you either like a lot or you hate the ground that it, that, it, that you hate the air that it breathes, so to speak. It's an extremely divided movie. Let's cover it. Prometheus's main goal is to uh, answer this question of uh, where do we come from? Why we were created? What is our purpose here? Prometheus asks those questions, but doesn't answer those questions. But it does answer some questions. Uh, if you've seen the first alien movie, uh, you see this, cal this calcified, mummified alien on, a, on the derelict craft. Well, they tell us that that is the engineer. That is called an engineer. And the engineer is, in, according to uh, this movie, is what created human life. But for some unknown reason, they wanted to wipe us out. And they are going to use the uh, aliens as a weapon. But they don't explain how these things were created, why they chose one to create these. It doesn't even even a remote. It doesn't even go into even a hint of why. And that's one of the big problems I have. This movie, that it, like, I don't want everything answered, but there's certain things that I do want answered while I'm watching this movie because I need. I want to know. I need to have. I need a reason as to why I want us to write a care. And I don't hate this movie, but a lot of times I, I have no reason to care. It's like, why are you wiping this out for? But of course, it, go, it maybe goes back to a callback, to a callback line between, to a callback conversation between two characters where Michael Fassbender plays the character of David, who's an android. He's uh, talking to uh, Logan Marshall Green's character, who plays Dr. Holloway. And they have a little conversation where David asks the question, why did your people create me? And Holloway's response was, well, because we can. And David's response to that is, how would you feel if your people, if your creators told you that? Because we can. So, like, in a way, I kind of get it. But at the same time, I need something more concrete than we just want to destroy you because we can't. Like, I need a more solid reason. Like, do you feel like the Earth, do you feel like the people of Earth did not, you know, accomplish the goals that you had set? Do you feel like the people of Earth have outlived their welcome and it's time to wipe them out and start anew? Like, I need something. I need something. I need some emotional resonance as to why you want to put the world, put the Earth in extinction. Because as far as I'm concerned, you're just doing it because you got nothing better to do with your time. So, like, that's my main criticism is like lack of a high is, is from movie from a movie standpoint is lack of high stakes because honestly, truthfully, people will disagree with me. the The stakes in this movie are not high enough to even remotely care. But I look past. But you know, when it comes to a movie like this, I will draw away from that. And I'll focus more on the things I did enjoy. Number one, Ridley Scott's Return to Sci Return to the Alien movies was desperately needed. After the horrors of Alien 3, that abomination of Alien Resurrection, and the less than appealing Alien vs. Predator er movies, the first one I did enjoy, though I can see why people are against it. The third one I did not like, and it's very evident as to why that one was bad. So yeah, you pretty much have four movies in a row that just were low. So Ridley Scott coming back definitely gave the credit, definitely gave the Alien movies some much needed credibility again. And his visual style has not changed at all. This film visually looks beautiful. Uh, special effects look great. The whole design, the whole like interior design of the, of the Prometheus spaceship looks great. 
the interior sets look amazing. And for the first time in an Alien movie, you actually get to... Well, for the first time in an Alien movie since, I, I want to say, Aliens, you actually get to explore a planet. Like, they go to a planet and they actually explore it. Like, they go to, like, this, uh, this cave, which ends up being the derelict spacecraft from the first movie. And that's where they discover the alien embryos and stuff like that. And they discover the space jockey. Like, they're actually, like, these, this, like, this is a group of scientists and explorers. And they're actually exploring. And you get to see what they find and stuff like that. And, like, you're really getting a, and, like, you're really seeing this world in a way. So, you know, for that, I give it big ups. And, you know, you got the actors. Um, for the most part, everyone is well acted. To me, the two standouts are Michael Fassbender as David, who was simply awesome. And you got uh, Idris Elba playing the Captain Janik. Um, I thought Idris was great. I would have loved to see more scenes with him. But in the screen time he did have, he was memorable. He's a badass. Um, his final scene is probably his best scene. Along with his two co-pilots. Uh, they do they have they do the heroic they have the heroic death. And what they do to me is very satisfying. And it's like, you know what, if you're gonna go out, <clears throat> go out with a bang. That's exactly what happened. So that's all good. And you got Charlize Theron, who was who looked incredibly good who was incredibly good in this movie too, as that real bitch character. You know, big props to her. She did a great job also. And you got Nomi Rapace, and you got Mar Mara Logan Marshall Green, who are the two sci lead scientists. And they do good, too. Um, I found them to be a little bland in some areas, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. But like I said, Michael Fassbender as David really is the show stealer. He is, in my opinion, he's the best character in the movie. He's the best actor in the movie. Um, I love his portrayal as David. He's... um. He's kind of like a mixture between Ash and Bishop, you know what I'm saying? Like, like he's a mixture to me of, of Ash and Bishop. Like, he has that uh, pleasant demeanor of uh, Bishop, but yet he has that uh, maniacal side like Ash. But only David ain't going to go on a killing spree like Ash did. Like, you know, David's a little more sneakier than that. Like, he, like he'll, uh, he'll poison your drink and you won't see it coming type of thing, just to see what would happen, because in one part of the movie, David steals some of one of those alien, the alien embryo, and tips into a drink, gives it to Holloway, and Holloway, you know, feels the effects of it, and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, so David, so that's why David means the better, one of the best characters, but at the end, you know, he, uh, kind of, well, doesn't really redeem himself, but, uh, he and Shaw kind of have, like, a little bit of an amends because they have to work together to get to escape the planet, which they eventually do. That's something like the alien creature design. In this movie are pretty good. Also, like you, you see the face hugger, which is like in its first appearance, like this big fucking octopus thing, and you see the engineer, and then you see like this uh, other creature that looks like a fucking snake with a venus, looks like a snake that opens up. It looks creepy as hell. Out. But um, that's all good too. Like the effects are practical effects. It looked great. Some CGI too, but that's needed. But the best scene in this movie, by far, is the abortion scene. That abortion scene is balls to the wall awesomeness. It stays with you. It sticks in your brain. After you see that scene, you're just like, the fuck did I just see? Abortion scene automatically raises this movie up uh, up the ladder a little bit because without that scene I'm sorry but without the scene this movie would have fell apart the, that abortion scene was much needed and it came at the right time too because if that abortion scene was not in this movie this movie would have just been a would have fell flat and just would have like been like a just a generic you know this isn't the most exciting thing in the world type of movie and, and you know what it's not uh, but then again look at the first Alien movie like I'm going to compare and contrast for a second. The first Alien movie had a very slow pace and a very slow build. This movie was done the same way. It has a very slow pace and a very slow build. Though I can get the criticisms where the, alien, where the characters in Alien were more interesting 
these characters a little bit more cardboard cutouts and they're not as interesting. See, I get that. Of course, not you know, like not every character in this movie is like memorable. A lot of them are just like there, and they have no and barely have any development or dialogue. But you know, whatever. Well, anyway, well that is my those are my thoughts on Prometheus. Uh, overall, I give it a seven out of ten. Not a bad movie. It's serviceable. Uh, great special effects. Uh, solid acting from most of the cast. Awesome, memorable scenes. Uh, leaves it open for a sequel to further expand upon and probably fix up some certain things. Overall, for really Scott to try to sci-fi, again, 7 out of 10, not bad. Not necessarily horrible. Uh, you can definitely see why it's controversial and you can definitely see why fans are very divided, divided amongst it because it's one of those movies where like you either like it or you hate it. I personally like it but I don't love it. Anyway, I am AJ Legend. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you again next time.